Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. And we're going to start things out with the X570 motherboards, which of course will be released along with the next generation Ryzen 3000 series CPUs. The concern recently has been the pricing of these next generation motherboards with some reports saying that the boards could reach up to 800 US dollars, which is, well, rather expensive. So, the good news is, right off the bat, if you have a B450 motherboard or whatever previous generation uh, AM4 uh, motherboard you have, chances are very good that you can simply plonk in a Ryzen 3000 series CPU and you are good to go. You do lose out on uh, PCIe Generation 4, but for the majority of users, that's not going to mean much. GPUs now don't really need the additional bandwidth of PCIe 4.0. I'm not saying that it's bad to have. I'm just simply saying that it's not really going to do that much for you. Understand, I'm not saying that PCIe 4 is bad to have. I'm just simply saying that it's not really going to provide any additional benefit right now for graphics. What it will help with, though, is the next generation of drives such as NVMe and SSDs in general. You will definitely find additional memory bandwidth helpful there and depending on your usage scenario this may be of benefit. So for example if you're doing a lot of uh, 4k video editing then certainly having uh, extra SSD speed is not going to be a bad thing. But getting back to the motherboards, there has been, as I said, a growing concern regarding the pricing. Uh, AMD themselves have said that these boards are aimed at a premium market. Of course, you do have full performance on the previous generation boards. They've enforced that several times now. But at the end of the day, X570 is going to be more of a premium product. Uh, motherboard vendors have said very similar. And we know that the build quality of these next generation boards is also really impressive. With the first generation of Ryzen processors, motherboard vendors were a bit cautious. After all, what was the adoption rate of these next generation CPUs from AMD going to be like? Were they going to be a failure? Were they going to be a commercial success? So clearly, uh, OEMs and vendors at the time were not putting huge amounts of resources into the creation of platforms around that ecosystem. But that increased with Zen Plus, aka Ryzen 2000 service, and obviously now it's reached a pinnacle of the Ryzen 3000 series. So the build quality of these boards is substantially improved compared to previous Ryzen generations. In fact, I would say that it's reached a basic parity with Intel boards. In some cases, arguably, you could say that the, uh, the X570 boards are actually more. So what about pricing then? Because I've been kind of dancing around things for a while. Well, I've spoken to a couple of different motherboard vendors. And there's good news and there's some bad news. So the bad news, we'll start with that first, is that there will be boards which are really expensive. Um, they're not willing to give prices just yet because it does also depend on the market. But I wouldn't be surprised if you are looking at around seven to eight hundred US dollars for some of the boards which are really feature packed and support lots of uh, NVMe drives and so on and so on and basically have lots of shiny stuff attached to them. But those boards, to be honest, are going to be like the like the outer reaches for most people. And I don't just mean in terms of pricing, but also usage scenario. Like the average gamer is probably not going to need those boards. Uh, then again, the average gamer is probably also not going to need a 3950X. Um, so if you have a desire to go for a cheaper board, there is some good news. And I'm going to read out a couple of quotes from a motherboard vendor. The boards will be a little more expensive than the previous generation due to the technology to get PCIe Gen 4 to work correctly. I cannot discuss pricing exactly, however the top end flagship models may be in the price region you mentioned, I'll talk about what I said in just a moment, but of course there will be lower end models that are much cheaper. While the prices for boards will be a little more expensive than the previous generation or the Intel equivalents, the CPU prices are very competitive. So overall, the CPU and motherboard together will be very competitive versus their rival options. 
So you can almost think of it that there's actually going to be three different tiers of X570 boards. There's going to be like the more budget focused X570 boards. There's going to be the more mainstream focused boards. And then there's going to be the premium boards, which are going to be more aimed at people who are like content creators. Another uh, uh, motherboard vendor that I spoke to, and uh, what I was told by their representative, and they're actually going to be getting back to me, hopefully, uh, the next day or so, uh, depending on time zones and who they can get hold of at the head office. But they've told me that they're going to get uh, more information regarding the pricing, but from what they understand, uh, that yes, there will be the really expensive motherboards that I just mentioned of like 800 US dollars or what, whatever they end up being. However, they do have plans to release substantially cheaper models, which will appeal to individuals who possibly want PCIe Generation 4, but also don't necessarily need to plug in a whole bunch of NVMe drives. Unofficially, I've been given also a couple of price points. I've heard around 200 US dollars to maybe around 250 US dollars for maybe the cheaper end boards, but don't count on those figures. Those are just some numbers that I've been kind of told uh, unofficially and they may end up being cheaper or more expensive than that so don't say that you know if that if those numbers turn out to be incorrect don't don't you know be chasing me around with a pitchfork I, I'm just kind of telling you what they believe at the moment and they are going to get back to me with uh, more accurate figures as soon as they possibly can so I would actually be a lot more upset about this honestly if we did not have the backwards compatibility with the previous generation um, as it is, I do understand they're really expensive, and um, yeah, it is what it is. Hopefully we can get some cheaper boards in the future, but for now, at the very least, we have the backwards compatibility with older boards, and quite frankly, there is a really good ecosystem at the moment of like B450 and X470 uh, boards, which are actually on pretty good uh, sales right now, so uh, yeah, just make sure that you grab one. I would personally recommend waiting until there are reviews out so that we can start doing more in-depth investigations to see exactly what issues there are, if any, with uh, memory overclocking from the leaks, which I'm not going to go super into in this video because, you know, it's already kind of, the segment's already kind of going super long as it is. But from the leaks we've seen thus far, overclocking on the... Uh, 400 series boards when it comes to memory it does seem to be pretty good and we've seen uh, a couple of overclock results I actually discussed the 3950X uh, um, leaked benchmark a couple of days ago where we saw memory speeds hit like 4000 ish megahertz which is definitely a good indicator that if you do go for one of the older boards you're probably not going to miss out too much to be honest. Oh and while I'm on the subject of uh, discussions with uh, AIBs I'll also mention that during my discussions with one of them, they also confirmed to me RTX Super is actually a thing. They say that they don't know their plans at the moment when it comes to marketing, um, because I'm asking for samples, to be totally honest with you. <laughs> but yeah, they don't know their plans at the moment, but they have told me that uh, they will be knowing more in the not too distant future. And that actually makes a lot of sense and ties in nicely with, I think, yesterday's video where I was detailing that we're actually seeing like test samples being shipped from NVIDIA to AIBs so that they can start, you know, tinkering and like creating whatever uh, variants they want to. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens there because of the super branding and a couple of uh, brands already have like super clocked and whatever. So it's going to be kind of weird. <laughs> what cards do we end up with? But there you go. That's just a very small update for you. Sticking with very small updates, this is another small update on Intel's Comet Lake series of motherboards slash processors, which we know is going to be the 400 series board. There's actually been a chipset driver update. You can actually go ahead and check out uh, Intel's own website, and it does actually seem to have preliminary support for the 400 series PCH. Uh, just as a quick reminder, the Z490 or whatever it ends up being called, um, is going to be its own like thing it's going to basically be like this clear line in the sand and you can't at least in theory put a uh, comet lake cpu in a z390 board from what i'm told it's simply because there's going to be additional pins for power delivery and so on although the socket is basically identical um and the whole reason behind this is because a there may be a higher tdp and b intel are also 
obviously adding additional processor cores to uh, Comet Link. I've no idea before you ask what is going to happen regarding clock frequencies. I heard we may see a clock speed bump, maybe to all core 5 gigahertz, slightly more. But that is unfortunately all I know regarding Comet Lake at the moment. Oh, and there are some also rumors that it also supports additional instructions, but I've discussed that stuff uh, previously. So it's going to be really interesting to see exactly what happens with Comet Lake and how it's able to tackle AMD's next generation CPUs. I'm going to finish the video off with some Xbox Scarlet stuff because there has actually been a supposed leak of the console's specifications that has popped up on the internet and the website Notebook Check actually are reporting on this and a couple of you actually sent this to me via email so I figured I'd respond here despite the fact that I'm working on a larger Scarlet video. Um, which I'm about half-ish way through. I actually recorded the on-camera segments already, but I will be recording like additional stuff as well. Um, and I'm also working on RDNA stuff, uh, so I'm kind of working on those two things in tandem because obviously RDNA forms the basic uh, GPU structure of the next generation Xbox as well as PlayStation. So that's been one of the reasons that I've held back on the console stuff because I kind of figured that uh, AMD would be sending me over some of these technical documents, so now I can get a better understanding of exactly what's going on under the hood. Anyway, <laughs> getting back to the topic. Um, so, as I mentioned, there is a couple of different leaks that's floating around the internet at the moment regarding the specifications of Project Scarlet. Just as a quick reminder, during E3 2019, uh, Phil Spencer did take to the stage and confirmed the Scarlet is indeed still in development. It's going to be targeting at the very least 4K. And they also mentioned that 120 Hertz, although it can support up to 8K, they mentioned those magical words, Zen 2 processor, as well as uh, Nave based GPU, or of course, uh, AMD's uh, RDNA. They also said that there's going to be hardware ray tracing support. There were a couple of other figures that were touted as well. No mention on key character key characteristics of the console, such as oh the amount of RAM, bandwidth, T flops, and the rumor has it that we will get a more in depth understanding of the targets of the system later on in the year. I believe Phil actually said that on camera, although I can't remember exactly when or where he said that. Regardless, hardware ray, tr ray tracing was mentioned and. From my understanding, uh, that means that most likely this is going to be using at least some form of the next generation RDNA GPU from AMD. AMD themselves have officially confirmed what I had leaked a while ago, that the next generation Nave GPU will actually feature hardware ray tracing. So, there's a very good chance that the next generation Xbox will be using like V2 or at least like a kind of hybrid of RDNA 1 and RDNA 2. There's also said to be some customizations on the GPU. Oh, and from people who are going to ask inevitably, what about the PlayStation 5? Uh, ray traced audio has been definitely mentioned, but I'm also hearing from some insiders and leakers that the PlayStation 5 does also feature ray traced graphics. Uh, and during the Wired interview as well, the journalist who conducted the interview, I can't remember the chap's name, excuse me, but he said on Twitter that he's almost positive that Cerny was uh, referring to graphics because the conversation around the whole thing was ray traced graphics. So, you know, it would just make sense. Anyway, there has been a new leak that's posted regarding the specifications of the system. Now, I do definitely have some doubts regarding these specs, but let's go into them first. I'll link the uh, notebook check article in the description of this video. So... Starting things out with the CPU, it has 12 cores with a clock speed of 3.4 gigahertz. There is a custom GPU which is known as Arcturus. It has one gigabyte of level 4 cache with 1.3 terabytes per second of memory, of memory bandwidth and a floating point performance of 14.366 teraflops of uh, power that's with 80 compute units 28 gigabytes of gdr6 memory uh, with four gigabytes of this reserved for the operating system supposedly this is providing 672 gigabytes per second of bandwidths 
500 gigabyte NVMe SSD at 6 gigabytes per second plus a 1 terabyte traditional hard disk drive. There's hardware based ray tracing, as I mentioned, plus specifically the Xbox Scarlet Secret Source, which I'm assuming means various hardware customizations. So that would mean that AMD have basically created a custom GPU for Microsoft that would have 80 compute units, which is twice the number, just for your FYI, as the RX 5700 XT has, which has 40 compute units. But rather than going for a um, faster clock frequency, they've basically crammed in more compute units. And they're actually running at around the maybe 1400 megahertz mark uh, because that would give them about 1 point uh, sorry 14.3 ish t flops of performance now i have several issues with these specifications the first is that it's an awful lot of compute units that takes up a lot of die space indeed um i am not 100 percent convinced that they'd want to dedicate so much die space to this particular usage i mean it's just a lot of space and uh, the actual gpu die for the um rx 5700 xt the narvo based gpu um or the narvo 10 based gpu inside of the 5700 xt has a die size of 251 uh, millimeters squared uh, to give you an idea of how big that is compared to the uh, Xbox One X, which has a very large die indeed. The Xbox One X uh, APU is 360 mm squared. Admittedly, uh, you would be able to cut down some of the GPU size simply because there would be components you wouldn't need in a console. But even so, I just don't see them squeezing in this number of compute units. I could definitely see like 50, 60 compute units possibly. But 80 is just, I think it's a prohibitive number. The other concern I have with these specs, quite frankly, the other concern I have with these specifications is 12 processor cores. That's an awful lot of CPU space. And it would also mean that there's a lot greater chance of like something going wrong. You would need uh, free CCXs for that. Uh, the clock frequency is also really high. I just imagine that all of this stuff together would just eat up a lot of uh, power consumption and put out a lot of heat. So I personally don't believe these specifications. I think they're a little too good to be true. There's also been a lot of debate uh, online at the moment of what is more powerful, the uh, next generation Xbox and next generation PlayStation. And apparently even some games developers are debating it of like some people have heard the PlayStation is more powerful, I've ever said, uh, said that the next generation Xbox is more powerful, and I think we're going to learn a lot more as the uh, year progresses, and as I said, I will be doing a much deeper analysis of this in the not-too-distant future. With all of that said, though, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, then you know what to do. Like, share, comment, and subscribe, because it hel helps us out a ton, and you can find us on social media, which of course is linked in the description of this very video, as well as Amazon affiliate links if you want to buy like a new game or whatever. And you can also find us on Patreon if you would like to help out on a monthly basis, that would be amazing. But take care of yourselves, have a great day, bye for now.